Are you saying that Eminem's a cranky old man? Come on, man. <laughs> the man is. Sometimes he rants about shit and it's like, okay, man. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. We are back here with... Into the Geekverse. My name's Tyler. And I am Zach. Uh, we are both your hosts on here. Uh, this is the third episode of the month and uh, supposedly going to be the last, but not well, not because we're being lazy, but it's because me and Phil are going to Comic-Con and we're going to have a lot of coverage there. So you won't get a full Into the Geek First podcast, but you will get a normal, not normal, but more segments. Like we're planning on doing a podcast every day we're out there for a different subject. Um it's going to be a lot of coverage for you guys. Yeah, so we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I know Thursday, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine will be our spoiler review for that one because we're going to go see it. But every other day is going to be interesting to see what we end up doing, what we don't. Uh, but it's cool because it's gotten us a lot of uh, new opportunities because of this. So I'm trying to get us into the boys' uh, press junk there because they're going. The whole cast is... I told uh, Phil if we do, though, uh, I'm too nervous to interview a lot of them, so I want him to interview everyone. And, and when I say everyone, I mean the entire cast is going. So if we get onto the red carpet, he's going to be in charge of interviewing everyone. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. It'll be cool, though. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see if we do. If not, there's so many cool things that they just announced, like, uh, you know, the penguin bar from the Batman uh, mm -hmm. movie mm -hmm. they're bringing that to comic-con because the penguin show they're like gonna hype it up so it's called the iceberg lounge so i've like that's really i cool. submitted 25 times to hopefully get in to go like that is like all i care about going that, that, that would be a really cool lounge to go like, if yeah. they do it well that'll be super neat well and that's experience. the coolest thing about comic-con is yes it's cool to walk the panels and it's cool to sit in and see exclusive stuff but the activations when they are done right are the funnest things like paramount does one every year it's called the lodge and you go there and they give you free drinks and free food and like last year they gave giving free tattoos to people like but the line was too long wow. I, I was actually debating on doing it and getting like my first tattoo at there because i was like f it's fucking free that's mine as well free tattoos even. but they do like all these different things um and this year it's spongebob's uh 30th anniversary i think so they're doing like a whole big push for that but you know what else they're bringing there they're bringing the bear it's a restaurant it's like a pop-up restaurant so you get to wow. try their food so that is fx and fx always goes all out too uh they did a whole american horror story maze one time oh fuck that that thing was creepy so really quickly you know that the restaurant that the bears at is actually a legit yeah it's a real one it's called yeah. the beef yeah yeah, they make like apparently the best mm -hmm. Italian beef sandwich. My uh, which one of my I friends am went there. Such a fan of. Yeah. Anybody has uh, Portillos around them? Go to Portillos. Literally just ate and there. Get, oh my, I'm I'm thinking about getting that for lunch. Honestly, you should. I, I probably is the only will. one at uh, and Tempe get Italian beef dipped. Mm -hmm. Hot peppers and sweet peppers. Yeah, is that your go-to there every time? That or a Chicago dog depends on how hungry I am. Oh, okay. The Chicago dog is very good. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Chicago dog. No, no, not at all. Did you start the bear yet or no? You haven't had time? Oh, no, not yet. I, it's crazy because I have it's such. I know you love that love show. love for yeah. that show and I just have not. I really need to. The season's interesting. Um, I A lot of people didn't like it. I, I liked it still. I thought it was good. My my only uh, thing with it was a lot of people complain that like there's no character progression, but I think there's a reason for that. I think this is the setup season for the finale. I think the next season is the last one. So some I can't remember who told me, but they were saying that the Bears like it was only like so many shows. Like apparently they like, only they're gonna release the other half of it. Yeah, so they filmed 18 episodes so far, but only 10 have been. Uh, put out uh, gotcha so or eight, 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 I remember. So yeah, eight, eight more or gotcha. whatever should go out um and those uh, my prediction is that's the final stuff i don't think mm. they're doing another season and if they do that would probably be the final one and i think that would more be like th this season feels like a very good in-between one where it's setting up all the things it's just without getting into spoilers the way they end this season yeah it like the last episode made me go yeah, this feels like one more season and you're done. 
Like the, there just doesn't feel like it feels like it's a great way to send off all the characters and specifically even like what they're doing with the restaurant and yeah. stuff. So I, I thought I mean, it was a good season. Nothing will beat the second up ep- second season though. But there is one episode in the season that I think is like the best. Yeah, like, top mentioning, three. You're yeah, Tina's, which Ao, uh, the main girl, directed it, and she is such a good director. Uh, you can really tell her passion. So I'm I'm hoping she does more in the future because I thought she was very special in oh. what she showed us with Tina. So you thinking? When I was, <laughs> yeah. So it was like when I was like, what was going to originally say? So with the bear, when I first watched it, the first two seasons back to back, as much as I love that show, it'd be a hard show to have so many season after season. Exactly. It's one, it's one of those shows that is so special. It's like you want to, because like the, mm-hmm. what the story is, it's like, how do you keep this story keep and going? everything yeah. going and still keeping it good and special? Well, you can't go on. Yeah. And also so character long. wise, I mean, the whole yeah. show is about the restaurant in the end of the day and these group of characters, but it's like, how do you keep, it's either your restaurant fails and or it works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Um, It's kind of like Succession, which was so fucking good. But that show, it ended last year, and a lot of people thought it could have gone for maybe two more seasons. I think the last season should have just been like four episodes longer, and it probably would have been like a perfect bow on it. Succession was that one show with like the rich people, right? Yeah. Dude, it's so... I've heard heard mixed reviews on it. Like I've heard like really good ones. Whoever doesn't like that show, I think they're dumb. Like legitimately, that is one of the best written shows <laughs> ever. Really? Really? Yes. Is it really that good? I watched the entire show within a month. The entire, wow. all four seasons, because it was going on its final season. I was like, oh, I should finally watch this. I watched a season a week, basically, until I caught up, and then I was only like two episodes behind, where like the two episodes that were left. It is an incredible show, incredible writing, hmm. uh, absolutely entertaining. Uh, it's like a dark comedy. Um, and watching these rich people run a company and like who's going to be the succeeder in taking over mm. for their father. So that's how like you probably look is like the frame of, the, of yeah. how you should have it watching the show is that it's a dark comedy. You don't take it so like a drama serious. Yeah, comedy. it's fucking funny. Gotcha, what they, gotcha. I mean, it shouldn't be funny what they're doing. Yeah. But like they, they do shit and you're like, <laughs> they're just so, fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Like not in the sense of like they're murdering people oh, yeah, or anything, yeah. but like, like it's, cor- it's behind the back. Yeah. It's corporate yeah, 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 stuff. Yeah. Like imagine like their company is basically like Disney, like in a way it's like a satire on like big corporations like Disney and Amazon prime, how they have like all these different fucking conglomerates, gotcha, like gotcha, cruise gotcha. ships, theme parks, all that stuff. So it, it's fuck, man, I would rewatch that show again. I thought that was such an incredible show. Like I was, just totally locked in and like i got my wife to watch it which is like a big thing like she's so picky she's so picky my next goal is game of thrones because this is how i get her into stuff i start watching it just while we're sitting in the same room yeah and then she starts paying attention and then she's and then eventually yeah, yeah. she gets locked so, in yeah, yeah. uh the boys that did not work on that but that's okay that's like a one out of 10 times that i've gotten her to, to watch something yeah, so game of thrones is like my next pick i'm just gonna put it on i'm just gonna have it play and then I think she'll like it. Hmm. That's my that's my goal at least. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Are you watching anything else right now or no? Uh, no. I the bear's the only thing that I know. I yeah. Need to start. And as you know, I'm like I don't watch a ton of stuff, but I pay attention to some things. Mm-hmm. Um, and when there is a show that I'm like, oh, no, I like it. Yeah. I like get full on into it. Into it. Yeah. No, I, I dig I dig that. I mean, TV is like for me the most not complex thing, but it, it's the hardest thing to cover because there's just so much of it. And I always TV is interesting too because a lot of people will shit on like some reviews that I do for it, like no matter what the show is, like oh that episode was terrible, it ruins the entire. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I might like like a show all the way up until the finale, and then I watch the finale, and I'm like. Eh. like you know what i mean like that's I just, like game of thrones for me is it like yeah. I, I just feel like um i don't know it's interesting like uh like star wars acolyte is a big one which a lot of people have been talking about a lot of people have been shitting on there's a lot of review bombing i don't want to get into it. i'm so exhausted over the fan base like people just need to shut the fuck up and be like stop stop mo- moaning and groaning like if someone likes it cool if someone doesn't like it fine but stop attacking people over it but 
attacking, sh- attacking people over it is absolutely dumb. It always is. Oh, it's but literally comment section. <laughs> but you can have a critical opinion of like, okay, you don't like so like if you like it, awesome. Cool. But don't go to that person and start attacking them for liking it. Oh, that's if you don't like yeah. it. That's literally the fan base. There was there was people already not liking it before it came out. I'm okay with people hating on the show itself because they don't like it. I get it. Like you have the what right if, what to. if someone doesn't like it even though they've never watched it? I I think that's dumb too. If you if you I don't feel like you can shit on something unless you've given it a, a try. 3 episodes max at least, especially when they're like only 30 minutes long. I think that you can have pre-notions of like, eh, it's probably not going to be my thing, but to be like it's, it's going to be the worst trash in the world due to this, this, and this. So, voicing my opinion on that note, no, I would not. But yeah. from like that, that this specific show, the stuff I've seen, I'm like, I'm not going to say that it's good or bad, but I can tell you one thing. The stuff that I have seen does not make me interested in wanting to watch it whatsoever. See, and that's how I was. I didn't like the trailers. I thought the trailers were awful for oh, that Oh, no. Show. I was talking about just like people talking about it. Oh. Again, their own personal reviews on yeah. what it is. I mean, for me, I've I've really liked the show up until actually the newest episode, which kind of just felt like a waste of time. Like they did another flashback episode, and I feel like you could have done that in the first flashback because it's the exact same scenes from another perspective, which is cool in context, but it's really boring <laughs> when you're watching it again. Yeah. But I don't know. I I'm I'm so over like, but that's just like. <laughs> But that's TV. Like TV is so interesting to watch because I could like everything I'm watching until one episode. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, now let's see. Because it's all about that ending. It's the same thing with a movie. You could watch a movie, like the entire thing until you get to the end and be like, huh, okay. Which we're going to talk about that because that's a, that's a lot of people's thoughts on long legs. So for people who don't know, this whole episode, the main topic is going to be long leg spoiler review. Me and Tyler have both seen the movie. I don't know what he thinks about the movie. He doesn't know what I think about the movie. So it's going to be quite interesting to see that. Um, But we're going to talk about, we're going to jump in and kind of talk about some reviewing stuff. We're going to review some things like Destiny, the final shape, which I'm really curious to hear your full opinion on. He's a Destiny player. We're also going to talk about like Shrek 5 being announced, the Hawk 2 girl getting famous. (laughs) The fuck is that? Uh, Eminem's new album and so much more. So Let's jump into this, man. Uh, let's talk about Shrek 5. Were you a Shrek kid? Did you like the original I mean, ones? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like one, one, two, and three. I don't know how many there are there's, out there. There's, but there's four. At some point, I like, just stopped yeah. watching. Okay. But that was probably because I actually grew up with like the earlier ones. Yeah. Big fan of them. I See, it's funny because I, I like, I love one and two. Three, as a kid, I liked. But when you go back and watch it, it is not a good movie. And same and four four is fine. Four is like very forgettable, but it's fine. And then they did the two Puss in Boots spinoffs. They had one that came out two years ago, and then one that came out forever ago. And like I remember when they announced the new one, I'm like, why, why are you making another Puss in Boots spinoff? The first one was fine, but why are you doing another one? Why don't you just do a Shrek Five? Right? Mm-hmm. Like that. That's the thing. And I judged a book by its cover. I thought it looked lazy. I thought it looked awful. Was that the one with the wolf? Yes. So I never saw that it's, one again. Like I've heard, yeah, ton. Like everybody that's seen it, told it's me incredible. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, honestly, I just, like I like, and that's where like movies and even yeah. shows. I'm like, there's so much stuff that comes out. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I'll how, tell you what, this. What? <laughs> like, how that, many are there now? <laughs> yeah, that movie. I, I was not excited for it. I didn't even go to the screening for it. They actually sent me one to watch at home because I was like, eh, I don't have time to go in, in theaters and watch it. I should have seen it in theaters. It, it, it is, if I put aside nostalgia and put away all my love for the first two Shrek films from when I grew up with them, that is the best written Shrek film, hands down, from animation to everything involved. It is the best Shrek film. It is so fucking well done and so well written. And I say that because it, it, Puss in Boots is having an anxiety attack. He's on his last life. So mm-hmm. how does that work? And he's having to go on this whole adventure. And the animation is is like jaw dropping. I don't. I really hope Shrek Five has the same animation style. I cannot recommend Puss in Boots Last Wish enough. Like that movie is so good. And the way it ends, 
sets up perfectly for Shrek 5. Like it didn't, if we never got a Shrek 5, it was fine, it's whatever. But now we're officially getting a Shrek 5 and I think that's very cool. Uh, it's gonna make a fuck ton of money. It's gonna make a, a like a fuck ton. <laughs> like, and you know what's even more wild? Two weeks prior to this, Toy Story 5 comes out. And then two weeks later, Shrek 5 comes out. So like this year, 2026, when it releases, it's, uh, let me see, it's July July 1st, 2026, when this movie releases, I, I think this will be like one of the most, the box office record currently for the, the United States, just the United States, is Star Wars The Force Awakens. I think there's a chance Shrek 5 beats it. Force Awakens was the seventh one, right? Yeah, the one when it all came back. It made like almost eight hundred million just in the United States, which is like that's not unheard that, of. It's that's understandable. Yeah, so it's, cr- it's Shrek coming. Well, no, I was talking about from Star Wars yeah, perspective. It was coming it's back. Coming back. But what else is coming back? It's so Shrek many Five. Years. <laughs> so I don't know. I I don't know where I want the story. They said everyone's coming back. So. I have to imagine they have some sort of story here. Why make another one? All these It's the same thing with Puss in Boots too. The only reason they made that film was because they had a story to tell. How many years has it been since Shrek 4 has come out? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, how mu- You want to guess? Seven years? Uh, so it's been 2010 with Shrek 4. So it's been, oh, what, it'll be f- 16 years. 2010? Yeah, 16 years since the last one. Or 16 years uh yeah will be the big difference it's wild because the first one came out in 2001 then they made 2004 shrek 2 2007 2010 so they had that nice three-year gap between each film then nothing so i don't know man i'm all for it and then puss in boots uh came out in 2011 and then the new one came out in uh like two years ago uh 2022 yeah 2022 yeah highly recommended though it's it's great i'm excited uh i think shrek 5 will be hopefully good <laughs> that, that that's about it like we, no one knows anything about the movie um we just know mike myers eddie murphy and cameron diaz are coming back so i actually was wondering what he was doing nowadays. who mike yeah he made a netflix show like a, really? yeah like two years ago it wasn't good but he oh. he made a thing I, he's just um ever since the love guru came out that that film like destroyed him not in terms of his career like i know a lot of people hated it but he was so confident in that movie and pff, nothing like it just it did it, it, so bad at the theaters that it just kind of like which pushed is, him away which is a lot of them cameron diaz was in retirement she retired early came out of retirement to do one movie with jamie fox and now this Eddie Murphy was like basically just a flat line in terms of his like bo- like anything he was doing. Then he did Dolomite, which was awesome. And then he starts coming back with all these movies like uh, Coming to America and now the new Beverly Hills Cop uh, that came out like two, three weeks ago. So speaking of which, we can also kind of talk about this a little bit later, but Gladiator 2. Oh, yeah. The trailer. I actually watched it. Did you watch it? No. Oh, OK. Do you like the first one? Yes. I love the first one. It's the best Ridley Scott it's- film amazing yeah are you um, excited for it i know someone who's seen it <laughs> really yeah um i know actually two people at this point i someone just messaged me the other day and saw it and then another person i knew a couple uh, months back i think at this point he had seen it all of them just say it's epic now i've said it ridley scott is i think the most overrated director of all time like why do you think that because a lot of his films are either trash or not great that genuinely or some of his bigger films like that people love are just i i think are overrated um gladiator though is his best movie like flat flat out but like here's the thing let me let me put it as a like uh napoleon was ass napoleon was a, a terrible movie it was one of the worst fucking movies i've i've seen in forever i hated that movie it was so fucking boring it was boring he didn't know what he was making fucking i don't think walking phoenix knew what they were doing and then Vanessa Kirby didn't. It's like every actor was told to do something different in that movie. Hmm. But, and that's my thing. He's so hit or miss. Sometimes he comes out and he makes fucking bomb ass movies. But let me go through the list, okay? Okay. Napoleon, not good. House of Gucci, House of Shit. 
This movie sucked. He made House of Gucci. He made that. I didn't and realize that. What's wild? He made two movies that year. He made The Last Duel with Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Adam Driver, which was phenomenal. One of his best films of his career. And then he made House of Gucci. And everyone's like hyping up House of Gucci. Everyone's like, he's going to be so good. He's going to have two for two this year. I'm like, there's no fucking way that man made two good movies in one year. <laughs> no way. And I was right. Then after that, he made uh, All the Money in the World. That one's fine. It's okay. I, it's kind of forgettable. Alien Covenant, we're both pretty big fans of. I like that one. The Martian, okay, that that's a good that's one. Good. Exodus, Gods and King, awful, awful, boring, fucking. I don't even. No one should even remember that movie. They needed the counselor, awful. Prometheus, that was awesome. I like Prometheus. Then he did Some Robin. People didn't like it though. I think they're crazy. I think they're crazy. But they also probably like. Um, like it took me a while for me to like really get to understand why I like that movie. Really, it, it's funny because the first time I remember me and Curtis actually snuck in to watch that film, and when we snuck in because we we'd bought tickets for another movie but went to that film instead, and there was this couple right next to us, and we're like, "Can you please just like pretend to be our parents?" And I thought I was going to get like an alien movie, right? Like a new alien film. Cause that was like, what the, is it an alien prequel? Is it not? Yeah. And I mean, it, it was in the end of the day, but it was like so much more thought provoking. And I was like, I don't know what I just watched, but I really liked it. And then I, I convinced my dad to take me cause I didn't have to sneak in. Yeah. I watched it again. I'm like, yeah, I fucking love this movie. Like it's super cool. But then he made Robin hood, a, a boring movie. He made Body of Lies. Uh, that one's decent. American Gangster, decent. A good year now. Kingdom of Heaven, eh. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. From like, some people would think you're crazy for not liking King of Heaven. King of the director's Heaven. cut's better. I'll give it that. But again, like he, I think earlier in his career, he made a lot of good movies. Like Thelma and Louise, Gladiator, Black Hawk Down's awesome, uh, Matchstick Men. Um, I'm finding out a lot of movies he just watched or he made. But So let me get to this. Blade Runner. A cult classic, a film that I absolutely appreciate. I think the sequel's better in every way. I mean, absolutely. Which people but will hate, but there's a reason why. I just, I, don't I know. think that the first one is absolutely phenomenal for what it is. Yeah, I love the first one. I love one and two. The only reason why two's better, and again, personal opinion, yeah, is because of the cinematography. Oh, the cinematography is... Uh, see... The cinematography The cinematography me. is incredible for the new it one. It gets me. Like, that's yeah. what I love about movies is show me just yeah. this beautiful just, thing with my eyes. And that's also something yeah. I love to... But that's where, like, I get with, like, I just... I did not care for the story in the first one. Like, at all. Where in the second one, I'm so... Fu like, I think Denis Villeneuve is a 10 times better director than Ridley Scott in every way. Ridley Scott could not make Dune. He could not make Dune Part Two. Denis, he oh he could go make Gladiator. Oh he could go make an Alien movie. I I think he like if you like that's how I like put it is like if Denis took some of these films and wanted to make them, I think they'd be ten times better. He just has an art style. He does. He's great. But Gladiator Two looks great. Looks awesome. I I'm hope skeptical. it's phenomenal. I, I am too. I, I've i never liked the idea of them doing a Gladiator 2. I thought it was dumb. Then you show me the cast, Denzel, Paul Mescal, um, uh, uh, who the fuck is it? I can't remember the guy's name, but stacked cast. Looks awesome. I watched the trailer, sold me. Looks cool. You know what people are trying to like get pissed off about the film though? Hmm. That Denzel does not do an accent. He just talks like Denzel and to me I say to them you do understand that in Gladiator they shouldn't be speaking English either right <laughs> when Denzel comes to set you let Denzel do what he wants to do it's, it's also it's, it's also Denzel yeah and hey, it's oh, also, oh wait wait did yeah. I also forget to mention it's Denzel yeah King Kong ain't got shit on me Just, fucking love training day um yeah I'm super hyped for that I've, I, I love Denzel Washington. Same. He's a phenomenal actor. Oh, he's one of the top, like top. If you ask me for my top five actors, I'd probably put Denzel up there. But you I mean, really? Yeah. Yeah. Of all time? Yeah. I think that man's like, even if I don't like the movie, I think he's such a talent. If I were to look at his, like every single movie he's been in, I would probably agree that like every single movie he's been in has from his, like 
again, his performance has been nothing but yeah. And his son's top great too. caliber. John David Washington. Oh. He's such a good actor too. Tenet's one of my favorite movies. I love Tenet so I much. I love I need a Tenet. sequel. I need a sequel, man. Like now. Like It'd be crazy for them to do a sequel in that movie. I, I would say never say never. I wouldn't be shook if 15 years from now. I never said never. Yeah. I'm just saying like however they do it. Would you call it Tenet 2 or would he find like a new word that's like backwards? That'd be really cool if they came up with the word. Another one. Perfectly. It's like you had to decipher mm-hmm. what this word meant. And yeah. Like, oh, that's why it's called this. Imagine if Denzel was in it too. Like it's John David Washington, Denzel. I, I've said this. I think if you were to do a Tenet 2 you place it way in the future where John David, where it's Denzel Washington as him. He just plays him older. That'd be so crazy. I'd be so down for it. But you know what else yeah, is cra- definitely? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. You know what else is crazy? You though? pitch that. I should. So uh, Christopher Nolan or Warner brothers. Yes. Both. Both. Oh, okay. I get it going. All right. I'll, sounds- I'll attempt it. They didn't want, they didn't want Sasquatch the movie though. Is Christopher Nolan doing a horror movie? No one knows. He's making something. No one knows what. It's just rumored to be a horror film right now. Will he actually make it? Who I knows? There's a it. lot of rumors he's going to do Bond, though. And I think if... Because Bond... I mean, we should know probably by next year who's directing and who is the next Bond. I've heard it's Aaron Taylor Johnson forever. Like, apparently he has the job. Like, it's his. Now it's just who's developing around him. So, I don't know. I'm interested. But you know what sucks? Tyler, you know what sucks? What? So you know our friend Sasquatch, how he doesn't have like a job or anything yet? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. So explain to me how Sasquatch does not have a job, but Hawk 2 Girl does. The Hawk 2 Girl. I, 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 it, if you, if you, if you put me on the internet, like she got, she was drunk and she answered a question on the street. And she's famous. Like, this is the society we're living in, where she has a manager, an agent, all this stuff. I've and been she's saying this about society since I've realized about yeah. like, the Kardashians. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong. She could come out, say she makes a podcast. I think that's like, there's a rumor she's going to make a podcast. And I listen to it. And it's actually really interesting and fun. Oh, I'll take back every word I'm saying. But, th- but there are so many talented people in this world. That's my point. <laughs> Society props up people. Yeah. And gets them famous. Yeah. That don't need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this girl just said something, which goes against a lot of, like, politically correct things. <laughs> Put them that way. I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious, too. But the fact that it's more of a sexual thing and we there's like this big thing of like being appropriate. Yeah. This just boosted this chick. Yeah. And it's funny because no one knew who she was. She didn't even have social media. So people were like coming out like, oh, she was a preschool teacher and all this stuff. And she's like, no, I worked in a factory. Everyone thought it was funny. And it like genuinely it is it's funny. funny. Like her answer was funny. It's funny. The guy well, who that's interviewed the crazy her. thing that like people that become memes are able to get a platform. Yeah. Well, you know it's even. When I want to know a lot of talented people out there. Yeah. I want to know the person who interviewed her. Where is he at now? Is he not famous? That's like what I'm saying he's the one that gave her the platform to talk. Yeah. If I was a manager or producer, I'd be like that guy asked a funny question. We should partner with him and get him a show that's something people would watch because people watch it all fucking time on tiktok but no this girl i don't know like that's that's also like the crazy thing of like why i think it's so like just doesn't make sense to me i'm like yeah that channel whoever it was that recorded it i don't know if they're blowing up i i mean i don't know i i i'm very curious to see if they are still or not but hey, maybe they got a little bit more recognition but or like a couple more followers i don't know I, but I, I guarantee you it's not on the level of this chick no no absolutely not i mean this girl made i think what was the she just showed up to something and made like almost i think a million dollars or something just for showing up to something 
Like, please, someone interview me while I'm drunk, and I will give you dynamite gold. Like, you know what I will say, though? And I'll give her credit where credit is due. She's actually doing it. How many people have become memes, and then they didn't do no, anything like, with it? As much as I want to, like, bash on it and, like, just be just like, what the fuck? At the end of the day, I'm like... Hey, I'm happy because she, she could have cool. easily. Yeah, she could have easily like, been like, this is embarrassing. I can't be a full yeah. on hater at the end of the day. Yeah. I have to recognize it for what it is. It is what it is. This is the reality mm-hmm. we live in. I saw someone say. I just hope that she does doesn't, not. Doesn't do what? Throw it all away. Eh, she probably will. I, I saw someone. It up. Like, I hope that she actually has a good platform to do something cool. Maybe. Someone said if I were her, I would just make an OnlyFans for one month everyone would jump on it she'd make a good five million dollars and the then just crazy exit thing, out. that's not wrong no because people are sick bastards in this fucking world man like that's not like she could easily make a couple mil just from that in 24 hours yeah she'd probably break the record even if she wasn't doing anything inappropriate because people would just think she is because people are dumb I don't know. Yeah. It's so interesting to me. She would make so much money, but that's, again, the reality we live in. Yeah. And people might be like, why are you talking about the Hawk 2 girl on the end of the geek first? Because it's just... It's it's a topic. It's it's a geek thing. Like, the internet is a geek thing. You can be a geek for anything, and she's a geek. You really can be a geek for anything. Yeah, and she's a geek for Hawk 2-ing on people, so... Mm, Not just that. Well something more specific yeah so let's move forward man eminem dropped a new fucking album uh the death of slim shady which i've been anticipating since he had dropped houdini uh when i listened to houdini and watched the music video i thought that was like one of the coolest things i had like you know what i mean like yeah i watched it and i was like this is classic slim shady this is classic eminem this is what i've been wanting from him and i felt like the last three to four albums of his have kind of been like big rants at the world which is totally fine he's at that age where that's where he wants to rap and talk about and no one will ever deny that it's just not my cup of tea he is old he's older i love him though man you're saying that eminem's a cranky old man come on man the man is sometimes he rants about shit and it's like okay man and this album listening to it in order um it is a great experience. So I want to hear from you. What what was your experience listening to this? What did you think about the album? And uh, what do you think of like how he told the story of basically, because I didn't take it as he's killing Slim Shady forever. I take it as Slim Shady has been his nightmare and been not cursing him, but on his shoulder the entire time, you know, throughout his entire career. And now how like people are trying to cancel him for stuff he said years ago and he kind of comes back and says a lot of that but you know by the end he kind of wakes up i think on guilty conscience too he wakes up and then you know it ends the rest of the songs in the whole album are a little bit more slower depressing like the temporary one about his daughter and same thing with somebody save me so yeah what about what do you think um when i first listened to houdini and watched the music video especially the music videos like I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, not every single reference, but there was so many. I was like, "Oh, I know, like exactly what he's yep. gonna do." I said, "I think I should say," because at the end of the day, I didn't really know. But I was kind of, to my surprise, it was what I kind of expected. Was it's old Eminem, Slim Shady, uh, just that super crude. Don't give a fuck. I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want to say. Um, and he even talks about like canceling himself, right? I like how he did the voice yeah. thing back and forth. Like he would go from Slim to Eminem. Like yeah. it, it's really fascinating. So, and I would say that's also anytime you listen to an album, a new album, you have to listen to front to back in yeah. order. Um, some albums, there's no really reason to. Other albums, you do, where because it tells a full story and those skits in between those songs are like so well fit in because it really does feel like a roller coaster ride yeah a story um the whole album feels like old eminem uh not very many songs that are super catchy but have so much word 
play. Yeah. If, I could, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and just crafting line after line after line. And entertainment. Smithing. It's very entertaining. Yes. Um, it, it's one of those albums that, as when I listen to an album, I pick my favorite songs to put on a playlist. And this album didn't have a lot that I would just play on their own. Yeah. They're more of, I, w- I would listen to the whole album again. And that song is awesome. Um, for me, there's a couple that like kind of stick out. Like Antichrist, I thought was awesome, a, a great one. Yeah. Like the whole thing, Lucifer, Antichrist, and Fuel. Like those three back to back were phenomenal. I like Head Honcho. Head Honcho was great. Honcho uh, a good one. Houdini is. Houdini great. is like it's. There's so much guilty conscience too. I was yeah. really hoping Dre would be on it because the original guilty conscience song is one of my favorites of Eminem. But I think it was smart to how he had Eminem versus Slim Shady yeah. in terms of that. But honestly, in terms of actual, like, well, the whole album's really quality. I think it's one of Eminem's best albums in years. Honestly, probably since, uh, is it Rehab? Is Rehab the one with Spacebound and all those? Yeah, that was it. Oh, Recovery. Sorry. Recovery is the album name. That, Some people didn't like that album. Which is fucking mind-blowing to me. Well, because it's very radio-centric. A yeah. lot of those songs hit the radio stream. It's all... It's produced differently. Mm-hmm. It's... Which, you know, it's funny. The, the songs that were on the radio, I liked. But it was like Space Bound is like my favorite song from there. And I don't remember that ever playing on the radio. I heard Space Bound Did a you? lot. Did yeah. you? Don't, I don't remember it at the all. The one song I've never heard off that album play on the radio but again i could be wrong because you didn't hear mm-hmm. space bound was cinderella man cinderella man oh, that was, one was by good far too. my favorite song off that yeah album. that one's really good too but the song temporary where he has his daughter's vhs stuff like the oh yeah the song about Haley. yeah uh bro when he started talking about like this song's like for after i'm gone i'm like fuck man i'm trying not to cry like that that's deep mm-hmm. and then somebody saved me when he opens up about like his drug abuse and stuff like that Th- this album was fucking great. Even the Tobey Maguire song, Tobey Maguire got bit by a spider, but I got bit by a goat. Like those like wow. little things. And I was reading, there were more, like he had, I think like uh, 30 songs to pick and the Toby song almost didn't make it, but he was such a big fan of it, of Baby Tron and uh, Big Sean. And he's like, I have to keep it on the album. Like it's just, hmm. so. Yeah, I would say overall, I mean, I have not given it, you know, a ton of listens back to back. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I'd give it a solid eight. I I'm at a like an eight point five uh, or so on there. Um, it didn't scratch everything I was expecting it to be because of like Houdini set kind of an expectation for what I thought the album was going to mm-hmm. be, and it was different. But it's really hard to beat. I mean, when you're Eminem, you got the Eminem show, you got Encore. You got relapse. I mean, like, those are all classics. I mean, yeah. they're not going anywhere in his discography. They're going to be recognized as some of his best work to some people. And that's where this album feels like it fits in with that older stuff, but it's mixed with his maturity. His of maturity. Hair. Yeah. Yep. Everything is blended so perfectly where it really does feel like mm-hmm. an Eminem and Slim Shady yeah. album. Which I'm curious to people. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm curious to see where does he go next now? Like what's his next album? For me, I think the safest place to go is to continue with that love letter to um to Haley and his family and maybe do something like uh what's it called? Like um which one has Mockingbird on it, do you know? Off the top of my head, I don't. Okay. But for me, it's like if you come back, I'm trying to figure it out. But if you come back and do a whole album like that, I could see him doing it because now he's kind of growing growing and showing to that out way. But I don't know. I'm very curious. He he is phenomenal. Uh, yeah. You know when we were talking about like the, the big three, the best rappers of all time? Mm-hmm. You know, we never mentioned Eminem. In that whole conversation, we never fucking mentioned Eminem. Uh, yeah, but you're also saying top three on a list of so many great people. Yeah, but we so still many, missed like, Eminem. Great. And he should have been mentioned. I mean, he definitely deserves recognition. Yeah. Out of I some of the people we were saying, he he definitely did. I went back and listened to it. I, when I was editing that one, I was like, yeah, we fucked up. That We should have absolutely mentioned Eminem. We were mentioning rappers that... I don't even think are in the same ballpark as him. Really? Yes. 
But then again, we're also, we're also talking about this off the rip. We're not. I know. I know. It's just funny to me that I mean, neither Eminem, of us yeah. came up with it. But so. I mean, I don't know. Like Eminem, there's a reason why he's recognized for what he is. He is like the first respected white rapper from that regard, right? Yeah. He worked with, I mean, Dr. Dre. Yeah. Right? Huge. His rap style. Mm-hmm is so unique yeah it's unique to him mm-hmm. in ways that's i mean that deserves i mean absolutely that deserves recognition yeah. because he was able to write lyrics and combine words that just like what yeah and just so smart but he hasn't like he didn't create like a style that someone else could pick up you know if it's like east coast west coast southern style Maybe that's the reason why it's not not considered one of the greats. I don't know. Kind of like how I would say T.I. is a godfather of trap music. He would be considered one of the greats because he literally created a genre. Yeah, But at the same time, I think there's an argument to be made that Eminem did create stuff. So He did. It's just like there's so many. I think we should just take the L and agree that we fucked up and should have mentioned him. I'd have to look back on my list. We, We should have mentioned him, Tyler. Come on. You're going to tell me out of every person we mentioned, we didn't, we shouldn't have mentioned him. Even if you look back, I guarantee you, you'll be like, yeah, we should have mentioned. He should have at least been mentioned because we weren't giving like, what was it? Top three or top five? We, we talked top three, but then we just like went off and just said like who, who else could obviously be a part of that? And we never mentioned him. Yeah. I mean, top three is hard. I don't know if I could put... That's him. fine not to say I don't, top three, I, I don't think but I to could, not even have him in a conversation, I, okay, that's what that, we okay, fucked up then at. That, that's what that, I'm saying. Yes. Not mentioning him in just discussion, that's fucked up. Yeah. We fucked up, but putting him on a top three, I don't think I could put Eminem on a top three. Top five, easy. Yeah. So, all right, fair enough. <laughs> up. Uh, I'm going to say, just because we are uh, already at 41 minutes, we've not talked about long legs. If it's okay with you, can we just jump into long legs? You want to jump into Yeah, long yeah. Legs? I'm going to skip Kendrick, Concord, and Destiny, if that's fine with you. That's fine with me. All, if right. You really want, all right. Yeah, I wanna, I'd want. i rather just talk about mm, long legs. The rest okay. of the, all right. So, neither of us know our opinions. So, this is how I want to say it. On three out of 10, we're going to say our score. Now, remember, on this podcast, if you have a seven, you can't say a seven. Okay, it has to be either a six or Already, an eight. I, I know. Okay, ready? One, two, three, eight. ten. Okay, cool. Why an eight? This is non-spoilers first. So for everyone who has not watched Long Legs, you are safe. Um, nothing wrong with the movie. Personally, it's more of my again my personal yeah. opinion. The trailer made it so much more horrifying than the actual movie was. Okay. So I never saw the trailer. I, I don't know what was in it. I don't yeah. know anything to that aspect. Um, I, I think this is the best horror film of this current decade in terms of what it's trying to do. Now, I've had people try and argue with me. It's not a fucking horror movie. I'm like, no, it is. Horror has different subgenres to it. Yes. There's an obviously if you don't agree on it. I didn't think the movie was the scariest thing in the world. No, nope. I'm not going to lie. I did have a nightmare the night after I saw it, um, which I'll, I'll say in my spoil. I'll say in the spoiler part, which part was in there. This film though, I thought was just going to be like, I didn't expect the hype. The hype was, and you're not on social media, but the hype was that this is the fucking scariest thing and the most horrifying movie and the most gruesome movie in years. And I do not agree with that. It is not you don't see all the kills. If you're seeing, if anybody's saying this is the most gruesome movie, I have people seen, were saying that. Go watch Terrifier. Yeah, but what I will say is that this film executes on one thing that a lot of films are missing, and that's atmosphere. Absolutely, and 100%. that is where, and that is where the film works at, and that's why I loved this movie. I loved it because every single time something happened like it just always kept progressing the story more and more to where i was so fascinated by long legs by the fbi agent by this entire thing and uh let's just jump into spoilers we are going to talk spoilers for long legs so if you've not seen the movie go away come back rewatch it if not cool spoil yourself I was I did not know she was gonna be like a psychic that could like tell like just by like looking at things and and stuff like that 
And when that got introduced really early on, like when her partner's oh, head no. got blown off. It, it starts off fast. Yeah. And I loved that moment. I love how she just walks out and she's like, it's that guy's house. Yeah, and I was like, not expecting. No. And then I love how it ties in to, you know, how now it goes in the long legs. And I like yes. how, th like, the, on a technical level, this film is so fucking good. But I like how, okay, you introduce that supernatural element, right? I didn't think any more, any other supernatural elements were going to come into play. And then you get into the doll stuff. And when the doll's introduced, I'm like, this is interesting. Because what is the fuck is this thing that they find? Mm. And when you start diving into what is this doll how does it work the silhouette behind it like the imagery um oh, or like yeah. when the hood's over it and you, you just see, see the, the eyes, eyes. that was that's what was in my nightmare my nightmare was we came home and a doll was in the house like that and it's fucking fascinating and then again you keep adding the supernatural because then they're like talking about how like he's never been in the house his fingerprints are nowhere. Yeah. So I'm like thinking to myself, oh, he probably like burned them off or did something weird or like somehow convinces them to kill everyone. But it's fucking great how it's all goes back to that supernatural. And it makes the movie in its atmosphere, makes it feel evil. Like it makes you, you feel like you're watching something evil, which was not what I was expecting at all. I am so happy I never watched a trailer and I'm so happy I did not look at a lot of the early reactions beforehand because yeah. I think that completely changed my opinion on what I was. I just thought I was getting an FBI agent going after a serial killer and I watched a movie and I was like, oh, there's supernatural shit in here. This director, Osgood Perkins, fun fact, do you know who his dad is? Hmm. His dad is the guy who played Norman Bates in the original Psycho movie. So oh, yeah. that's a big throwback that I that's didn't know. crazy. And I, I watched a lot of interviews with him where he says that he does not like a lot of modern day horror films. And you can clearly tell from this, this is a nice throwback to old school 70s, 80s, LA, or like crime noirs, yeah. but with a modern twist to it where it feels like it is made in modern day. And this man, if you please go and direct an Alan Wake movie, every single layer of this movie felt like an Alan Wake film like or an Alan Wake game like especially Alan Wake 2. Like I was really taken back by that. Like almost a lot of this movie actually felt like certain things that you did in Alan Wake 2, specifically as the FBI agent. Mm -hmm. You take clues and you look at them and you feel them and you put them up on a board and you actually try to see like what did this person do and you like get teleported into like that scenario. Phenomenal. So please go on. Uh, so watching the trailer, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool. This is an FBI agent hunting down a serial killer. Yeah. I was expecting really disturbing imagery. Um, which is not, not super, bad. no, yeah, super gory or I shouldn't say super gory, but just, it's going to be some shit. Not the movie whatsoever. Yeah. What I because I really thought about it. I was like, what is this movie from the horror perspective? Because from this movie, it did not scare me. Um, no, it's it's not a movie that in the moment it's scary. It's one of those movies that you like think on. Like I, I think like in terms of like like a family watching this, like, well, family should not be watching this with their kid. But I don't, you know what I mean? Like that that's the thing that uh, horror subjective in terms of what scares you and stuff. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think this horror for me, it did not work. Mm -hmm. It's good. For different reasons and why I like it. The horror, I thought, was honestly, whatever. It's very almost boring to me. But where that's like... It's but it's not like good, straight horror, though. It's exactly. Not. What this style of horror is, is unsettling. Yeah. For some people, they'll find this movie incredibly unsettling yeah. because of what it is. Me, personally, I'm just like, eh. Yeah. What I absolutely thought was so, so beautiful. One, the story of yeah. like the pacing of it, how this FBI agent, how they really tell get, it too, how, how they tell like, it. Like I was and really surprised. The cinematography yeah. was insane. I love really wide. You're always looking on the background, seeing if something's going to be moving focuses. I love that cinematography when he gets into her house. So good. And like walks behind. Yeah. Him. Like it's always look, it's trying to distract you mm -hmm. from like, I remember when she's on the phone in the cabin with her mom. Yeah. 
and you see just the kitchen. Yeah, and you're waiting. You're waiting for something. And nothing ever does. So it keeps that tension, and it makes you unsell, or like you're expecting something to happen, but n- nothing, nothing does. does. But that's also what I love about it, is that's set up from the first scene, where he pulls up in the car, and it's a wide lens of the house, and then when the little girl comes out, and he talks with her. Mm-hmm. I, I love that because that scene establishes so much. It establishes that any time that that angle, no matter what the point of view is, it's he's there. That means he's watching them outside of her cabin house. Same out angle. And you know, like from my mind, I was sitting there, I was like, he's out there right now. He's mm-hmm. watching her. And vice versa, as that goes out, she she sees him outside, you know, and she goes out there. And they keep doing that wide angle a lot throughout this movie. And it always made me feel that he was there. And if it wasn't him, it was the man downstairs, which was creepy. And I will say shout out to the marketing department on here. So I don't know. Do you know what Letterbox is? I don't know if you know. It's like an app you can like review movies on like follow friends. So I put my review on there. There's a man. I'm assuming it's someone from the studio who is commenting on most long leg reviews with his symbol stuff. And it says the man downstairs. That's the name of the letterbox account. (laughs) And when you go to the account to look at the two, the only two movies that they've ever watched says that they watched it in 1970, 75 and 1968 on January 14th and June 14th. That's funny. So I was like, that is really good marketing. Um, And they even, uh, they posted a trailer not a trailer, but they posted the heartbeat of the main chick when she saw Nicolas Cage in, in the uniform for the for the outfit for the first time and how fast her heartbeat started racing. The little girl? No, 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 no. The main FBI agent. Oh, really? Like, uh, her name's Michael Monroe, amazing actress. Um, yeah, when she first saw him, they had a thing on her that shows boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and, and he is creepy looking. Yeah, he has uh, definitely a weird, crazy look to him. Yeah. Um. I tried my hardest to not laugh when he slammed his face into oh, the yeah. table. Oh, yeah. That was gory. I was like, like it, so I thought the movie theater was going to be dead. No. no. When I first, like, I told you. Well, I purchased my tickets and there ain't, there's like no one. Yeah. Oh, no. There was a yeah. packed theater. So I didn't want to be rude to these people. I'm like, you notice how the credits were? What? You notice how the credits were? How they came down instead of up? I did not realize that. Yeah. And Off that, was, my, that actually, was a really cool. Granted, I didn't save for yeah. that long of the credits. That was, but you know, it was weird. That was a really cool experience because I usually don't. Um, every one of my theaters stayed and kept talking to like really? whoever they went with. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. no one really left until the credits were done. Um, and it was cool listening to people talk because like some people were like, I really liked it, but I more appreciate it than loved it. And I get I all those. Like, I feel like I'm, I landed that camp. That's a lot of like um, a lot of film critic friends of mine who are like huge on horror. We're like all in that same camp. I appreciate this more than love it. We're like, I don't know if again, if it's just because I literally knew I knew who was in it and I knew it was an FBI agent going after a serial killer. Mm-hmm. That's literally all I knew about the movie. I knew nothing else. And I'm so happy that is the way I watch this yeah. movie. And would definitely see, like from someone that loves horror and just likes really messed up things. Yeah, <laughs> this movie was is definitely I, I put it up there with like um, Hereditary. Oh yeah, like, like not level, but in the same sense of this movie deserves to be recognized as one of the greats when it comes to horror because it does something. So it makes well, it just feel evil. Like it makes you feel like you're watching something evil which is what I really like. And that's all from the atmosphere. That's why I liked it. I don't care for jump scares. I think jump scares are ass. There are pretty good ones in here, specifically when she has the photo and then all of a sudden it like flashes to him. Oh, yeah. thing. Really good editing too in here. But for me, like I hate jump scares. I despise them. I think they're the cheapest thing you could ever do for a horror movie yeah. in terms of like delivering like a scare. Because you're just playing off yeah. of just tensions. Yeah, you can sc- easily just throw in an easy, like, mm-hmm. super catch you off guard, yeah. and then the next thing, bam. But this movie, it doesn't rely on, like, uh, when the mom, when the when she goes inside to get her mom, and the FBI agent's sitting in the car, and then you just see the mom in the back of the window, and then she comes oh, around. Yeah, just- 
so like the, the poster have you seen the poster of the girl like it's that oh, moment yeah, yeah. and i've always won that was the other thing i knew and when i saw that i was like i will never unforget that moment like that every time i see that poster yeah. now i'm just gonna think about that and that's what i loved i actually liked that they didn't show a lot of the kills i liked that it was more of a again a thinking thing like it's letting the imagination do its thing. Exactly. And that's where I really liked it. And that's where I liked they, that they gave explanations. I didn't expect to get an explanation of what was going on. But they also don't tell it in a lazy way. They tell it in, like, everything. Even her past, they're like, oh, do you not remember this? Do you Like, people are telling her. And it usually can, like, exposition in horror films can be usually very boring. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy how they did it into this. No, it was very well done. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, it was, it's really good. Yeah. It's a really good movie. Yeah. Again, it's just not the type of horror that, that you, I enjoy. Yeah. The, this is the type of horror that I love. Yeah. And I you're, was. You're more, you're a fan of Hereditary. Yeah. Because of I think this is better style. than, I think this is better no, than I know. Hereditary. I totally did yeah. it, but it's just a different style of horror that some people are going to love and some people mm -hmm. are not. Yeah, I would land in the camp of I appreciate it for what yeah. it is. It's just not the horror that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. It's one of I'd have to like go back and really like look through the movies, but I would say this is the best horror movie to do unsettling right. Exactly, and I some guy again people like to attack about opinion. So when I said this is the best horror film of the decade, first off they mentioned what about all these movies? I'm like, sir. Those were in the last decade. This is the 2020s decade. 2020s decade of horror films have been honestly not great, personally. When did he talk to me get released? That, talk to me was the one. Then he goes, what about talk to me? Because I would put talk to me I, as it, like it's going to stay number one for this decade yeah. until something. They're making a new horror Yeah, I was going right to say, now. unless so. like Christopher Nolan comes out with yeah. one and it's phenomenal. If Alien comes out and it's like, Again, I know what to expect from it. Yeah. It's probably not going to do what yeah. Talk to Me did because it did something so new. Yeah. But, and horror is great because Cynthia thought Talk to Me was just fine. That's like she didn't, so she didn't, crazy. she was not blown away by it. But I think, again, Talk to Me is such a low budgeted movie, which is like insane to me in the end of the day how great that movie looks. But I think I like Long Legs more than Talk to Me personally. I think it's overall a stronger movie, but I loved Talk to Me. It's one of my favorites of the decade as well. It's probably my second favorite horror film. But like this, I went through a lot of horror, and I know there's a lot that I've not seen. But like X, I thought was just good. It's a, I it's a franchise I appreciate. Those. Like Pearl. Pearl was fine. I saw Maxine, and it was good. I liked it. But it, that franchise is something I more appreciate. Like, I just don't really care for those horror films. Like, they're not things that I would rewatch. I would go and rewatch Long Legs today. I've actually thought about trying to make time to go see it again. I wouldn't see Long Legs again. Oh, I would. I love it. But again, that's yeah. not my style of horror. Yeah. I, I love Talk to Me. What is your me? style of horror? Like, Talk to talk Me. To like, me. what else? Terrifier. Terrifier. Yeah. Because yeah. They're coming out with Funko Pops for Terrifier. Are they really? Yeah. That's amazing. So, I... Like anything that I almost watched it yesterday. Terrifier. Yeah, I got bored. I was like, I think I might watch this. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like my fit. Yeah, my so really quickly to answer your question. Yeah. My favorite type of horror is really disturbing, unsettling things. But like gore wise, right? Like yeah. more. Yeah. And you can even do disturbing, disturbing, disturbing imagery, like uh, yeah. the ring. Oh yeah. And like that's where I'm like, that's what I wanted Long Lakes to nail, mm -hmm. and what I, like I think where it would have made me like this is a 10 is give me imagery where it's just like please like change like that camera angle because of how just like unsettling goosebumps it gives me yeah but i think that's what's unique it to me, though. is when they do show gruesome stuff it's either from her perspective seeing the fbi agent get shot mm -hmm. seeing the dead bodies in the bed or it's from the doll's perspective Mm. which is interesting so like at the end of the movie when she goes in and the doll's sitting there yeah really yeah i don't want to we need to talk about that yeah the ending first off i, I want i almost bursted out laughing because of like not because it was so funny of like holy shit how the 
fuck is this going to, how is this going to go right now? Mm-hmm. I'm like so caught off guard. I'm like sitting like, holy, f- like did tense. You, did you notice the, tense. did you notice the devil? Yeah. You see, when she gets entered and they close the door and you see the silhouette behind her, right behind the, behind the window, I was like, oh fuck, the doll's already there. Yeah. And she enters the room and I'm like, this is it. I'm like, I would pop that guy in the head. I would pop the mom in the head. But me and Cynthia were talking about this and it's now a conversation of, and, and that's one thing that surprised me. She loved the movie. She fucking loved it. And I'm sitting there in the movie. I'm like, I don't know how she feels about this. She might fucking hate it. Like, and I was trying so hard not to hype that movie up for her. Yeah. And she walked uh, like the movie. ended. I'm like, what do you think? She goes, I love that. That was really good. But that me and her have been having conversations on that. Now does she become long legs now because she saved the girl? Does that entity now follow her? And I told her, I was like, I personally hope not, but there is a angle of that where I can completely see that she has no choice but to do that or else this little girl dies. Because that's basically how it was set up. That's basically how it was set up, you know? What so do you mean? The reason she didn't die as a little girl is because her mom saved her by making a deal with the devil, basically, which was Nicolas Cage's character. Yeah. He dies... The mom still has to carry this on. Yeah. It's like her thing. Like she doesn't have a choice. So does this entity, because she doesn't shoot the doll, you know what I mean? Like she keeps trying to reload it and everything, and she we don't know. We don't we don't know. And in my opinion, there's two ways to look at it. She you takes did, the the she takes the objective of having to make these dolls and, you know, kill these family members to continue on, or she doesn't. There's a couple ways to look at it. One, I'd have to rewatch that movie and really see how many rounds did that revolver have? How yeah. many rounds did she shoot? Another thing I really appreciated about how it ended, where it would make it very logical, was that if she got in there mm-hmm. and, and she automatically knew what was going on and what was about to unfold, yeah. she could not start shooting. Yeah. Because at that point, that would make her look like she's crazy. Oh yeah, but that's but what people want, would assume she is. But once that, let's go into the kitchen. Dad yeah. stabs her, knife in his hand. All right, logical reason why she had to shoot him. Yeah, her mom. She had a knife, but that's did the, not shoot her yeah. until that happened. That's the thing. All the audience felt though is walk in there, fucking start popping heads because you know what's gonna fucking happen. But again, to well, you, us from a lot, yeah. but again, from a logic. No, I know logic, I know. and that's what makes this movie even better because it really grounds it. Yeah. No, and I get that, and but also it. from a grounding aspect, this is your friend. This is the, her family that you kind of like for the most part, and that's your mom. Yeah. Do you want to shoot them? No. Like I, that's that's why. Like I I get why she didn't. I'm just saying like. The outside looking in, that's what any person, any audience member is going to feel like they're going to do. They're going to walk in. But then you also want to see it unfold. So yeah. that's what I loved. And then like another thing we were talking about was uh, when he keeps talking about your house was so white. Your house was the whitest I've ever mm-hmm. seen. It's like it, on a surface level, you think, oh, snow, right? I look at it as purity that he was looking at the pure families who were just perfect nothing was wrong with them and it's like he would stalk them and see that like what is their pure levels you know you see a religious mom and a daughter and there's nothing wrong with them no one ever visits them they go to church probably they do all their things and nothing ever comes out of it yeah she was so pure i want to love that i want to say um and i really need to read it from front to back actually the bible because there's a lot of symbolism yeah Oh, in the yeah. Bible t- related to this movie. And also, I feel like there's just a lot of symbolism that you can read in the Bible and then also related to different movies because there is a lot of references in a lot of movies that they pull straight out of there. Yeah. Just because it's, if you know kind of thing, if you pick it up, it adds this like depth mm-hmm. to layer. Um, so that's, it could be referencing something in the Bible because there was a lot of references in that movie about a white house and something yep. with related to white who knows i'll uh, wait for a youtube explanation video to come out and explain beat by beat the things i didn't see or yeah. miss. but i i love this movie i i i have really gone back and forth this is my favorite film of the year even over dune uh like right now my top five is 
Dune, Long Legs, Furiosa, Challengers. I can't. Oh, and then I think number, my number five was Civil War, which was a really good movie too. But yeah, Long Legs like made me go. It was the first horror film I watched this year where I was like, wow, that was awesome. That was fucking awesome. That was what I wanted. Uh, and I love horror. I think it's a cool subgenre to have fun in and do different things. Like M Night Shyamalan's Trap looks awesome this year. Uh, have you seen the trailer for that one? Which one is that? It's about a father who takes her daughter, his daughter, to a like a concert for like some big pop star, and he starts noticing there's a lot of cops everywhere and all this stuff. And so during the concert, he goes and gets like a a drink or something. He's like, "Hey, what's with all the cops?" And the guy leans forward. He goes, there's a serial killer here, and it's a trap to get him. And then he goes back to his daughter, and he pulls out his cell phone, and you see a person tied up at his house on a camera. So he's the fucking serial killer. And that's how the trailer ends, and that's the whole concept. Oh. And it looks so good. I fucking hope that's it's That's crazy. Yeah, so I, I love that. Before we jump off this, though, I do want to ask you, what are some of your other favorite horror films that maybe are like, I know you mentioned Terrifier and Talk to Me. Are there any others that you kind of want to mention that maybe is a little bit messed up or like some of the most messed up films? Like for me, I, I Hereditary, Midsummer are like two that just get to me. The Witch, I really love. Uh, yep. It Follows, I love. The Witch is definitely on there as well. Yeah. That's another really good really wide camera angles imagery that is just so wrong yep uh really disturbing i again i like stuff like that I, it's that's a hard one like right off the top of my head there's the shining uh love that the conjuring i love what they do with the conjuring movies nosferatu is probably going to be great this year i was year. about to say nosferatu that's yeah i'm excited for that I cannot Another wait. Another person came after me. He goes, well, Nosferatu is right around the corner. That could be the best of the decade. I'm like, yeah, it could yeah, be. It could be. Till I watch it. It could be. <laughs> Can't tell you if it is. Or it could I, be shite. Yeah. Uh, not from what I've heard. I've heard Nosferatu. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying. Perfect. Movie. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. that's not going to be amazing, but it could. Be. But yeah, like horror, like another one that I really like is Saint Maud. That is a. The Saint Maud's a lot like Long Legs, like in terms of it's just its atmosphere. Uh, really good movie. That one I would highly recommend. Uh, the Descent is awesome. Descent's the really Babadook. I love the Babadook. That one has atmosphere. Like I'm all about atmosphere. If you Babadook can creep, is really good. If you can creep me out on your atmosphere, I'm all for it. So, yeah. yeah, guys, definitely go check out Long Legs. I highly recommend it. Form your own opinion. Do not get overhyped though. Do not sit there and think it's going to be the scariest or more gruesome thing. It is not. But it is a very well made movie. So it is. To end this all out, let's take some viewer questions. All okay. right. So we got Austin Burke who asks, what is one element of the technical side of filmmaking that you most respond to? I think you've already kind of answered this today, but it, he said cinematography, shot selection, score, etc." I will go <laughs> first. Uh, for me, it's either cinematography or editing. Um, I've really gotten into like edit, specifically because I have to edit podcasts. I have to edit videos. I have to edit so many different things. Editing, I, I think a movie can be make or break in an editing room. And if I watch a movie and there's a, a unique style to the editing, such as long legs, like we talked about, in terms of when to put a you know the snake imagery and when to do this and when to cut to a different camera angle, those are the things that I think can again make or break a movie. I think one of my favorite uh, people to listen to talk, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, is. Mad Max Fury Road and Furiosa's editors and uh, Martin Scorsese's editor who has done like the last like five of his movies. Those two editors like have something unique to them and it's like, you know, it also all is in control of the pacing. Wolf of Wall Street doesn't feel like three hours. And that, all come, and that all comes down from a pacing style, editing it. Um, but again, the cinematography for those movies, good, but nothing like super mind-blowing. But you mentioned like Blade Runner 2049, like every shot in there is like, you can screenshot it, and put it on the wall. I think also one element that's not appreciated enough is the cinematography and animation films. People don't understand there is a cinematographer on animated films that has to be there. Spider-Verse is one of the biggest things. It's also one of the most gorgeous movies ever made. Yeah, yep. I would definitely agree with that. I mean, if it's picking one yeah. or picking two, 
I'd say cinematography and also score. Mm-hmm. Yeah, score score is a big one too. Um, what was there was a movie that I saw recently where the score was so I'm gonna try and figure it out right now. Like where it was so oh, kinds of kindness was like that, mm. and um, it was very just don't don't like a piano note. That's it, like a couple, but it made it work. It like works. It, yeah, and it it's works. it can be as simple as that. Or it can be as elegant and incredible as Oppenheimer's. Yep. So, but you could also have the opposite where it's not the simple, and they do something traditional yeah. that would think it works, and it just throws off the whole feel yep. of the movie. So, yeah, like if you have to have the right sounds, I think that's. I mean, you have the wrong sounds, wrong score, wrong mm-hmm. s- whatever it is at a certain scene it's not going to really have that punch that you're looking for. And then yeah. cinematography is, I'd say the most important aside from the story. Well, and, and score writing. is interesting because if you ever get a chance, if anyone ever gets a chance to go to a test screening, usually the score is not there. Mm-hmm. So when you watch the movie, there's no score and it takes away a lot. Um, even to put in perspective, a good friend of ours, Cody Curtis, one of my groomsmen, he just finished a movie and he sent me the short, all edited and everything, without the score, two months prior. And I watched it, and I was like, this is good. This is really good. And I told him that. I was like, this is really good, but it feels like it's missing something. And obviously, it's missing the score. Yeah. He sends me the final cut of it, and I watched it, and I was like, holy shit. Like, the score they had someone make for this changes the entire tone, changes the entire structure of the movie. And a movie that felt like a modern-day drama was now changed to a 1980s drama from its style, from its tone, and all because of the score. Like, it hmm. made me feel like I was watching one of those old dramas. So, I dug it. Next question. Uh, where do you think the new Deadpool movie will rank amongst the other MCU films for you? Mm-hmm. I really like this question because it's back and forth. And this is my most anticipated movie of the year. It, there's a lot riding on this for so many reasons. The MCU needs a big hit. The last two movies bombed from them. And people just need a win. And plus, it's Deadpool. And you're bringing back Hugh Jackman after he did a phenomenal job as Logan, which I just watched an interview with him. And they he's like, you know, before Logan, before we started filming Logan, I said, this was it. This is it for me. Then I watched Deadpool three days later, and I said, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool to see this all coming together. Part of me was like, why are you, why are you doing another one? Like, Logan was the perfect ending. But at the same time, it's like, this is cool. Like, if it doesn't affect Logan, it doesn't affect Logan. I'll watch it prior beforehand. But in terms of where do I think it ranks amongst the MCU films, I know someone that's seen the first 40 minutes. And if the first 40 minutes is anything to indicate about what my thoughts are going to be on this film, I think this might be my favorite MCU film. Right now, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is my favorite. I think it's just the perfect ending, the perfect structure, everything for an ending. And I'm all about endings. I'm all about story. Mm-hmm. The first 40 minutes of Deadpool and Wolverine is apparently the Deadpool you love, the humor, the gore, the guts, everything like that. And I'll have to tell you something off air that he told me that he does in it, and it's it's great. But he said it still has that heart. And that was the one thing I think was missing from Deadpool 2. And I'm really hoping they nail that and bring it back. And fun fact, everything you've seen in the trailers is only from that first 30 to 40 minutes. Wow. That's it. So everything after the next two acts, they said that they had they did not show anything in the marketing which excites me. So what about you? I know you're not, I know you haven't watched every MCU film, but for the most part, where do you think it would rank for you? High, low, medium. I would say it's going to rank high. That's where I'm at too. I I would say it'll probably rank somewhere on the top 10, or sorry, top five. Okay. Logan, I wouldn't, it, I can't put it on my top five because it's just in a special place. Just off well, by Logan's Logan's Logan not an just, MCU film. MCU is just straight uh, Marvel for what yeah, it is right now. Logan's still, my second favorite comic book film of all time. I would so. still consider it an MCU because it is the same character. It's just is it though? I I don't think it is. I don't think it's the. I think it's a different version of him. Oh, that's play. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's the same character, but yeah. just a different version. Yeah. So I would still constitute it as an MCU. It, he's still Marvel. He's a Marvel superhero in that movie. At the end of the day, classifying it for what it is. Not saying that it's actually. I'm trying Marvel. to save you, man. I'm trying to save you. Well, I'm just the saying. Fanboys are gonna attack you for that. 
MCU, MCU and Marvel, I mean, it's different for rankings and stuff like that. I mean, people can tap on their keyboards all they want. Yeah. It's not going to You get attacked me. in public. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> I, I live in Arizona is all I'm going to say, okay? I live in Arizona. You know, you know, if you told me that someone attacked you, like, just in public, and over that, I, I, w- I don't even know if I, I think I would just laugh. I, well, hopefully you'd be okay. But I think like my, cause I'm just, that's actually always been like a worry of mine is that like, I'm going to walk down the street and someone's going to like punch me because of an opinion I've had. Well, cause I've had people just come up to me and be like, I watched your YouTube channel or people are crazy. Don't ever like, oh, yeah. right. Don't ever like think that it yeah, won't yeah. because even from someone that just walks down the street and is like, I'm not, I'm my, my own business. I live in the world and I live in reality. People will sometimes just like, you know what? They see someone, it's like, I'm just going to snap right now on the yeah. steep. People just you have no idea. Yeah. Has it happened? No, thank God. But I will say that I read and have been told multiple times that the number one indication of s- someone to get mugged is, or like why people get looked at and like, oh, I'm going to mug this person is in your walk is intentional. If you have an intentional walk and you look like your head's on a swivel and you're looking around just aware, they're less likely to get mugged. Mm. Well, yeah, more people should be aware. If you have yeah. your AirPods in and you're not paying attention and, and music blaring. To your phone. Yeah. Yeah. As oh. you're walking. Oh, yeah. You're going to get punched or s- knifed or shot or robbed. Yeah, or- I'd, I'd much rather not. So I try not to. No, nah, I get that. It blows my mind when I like see someone like, like say you're trying to park at Target or Walmart and it's like someone's walking in the middle of the road, right? Yeah. And they have their headphones on, head down. I'm like, I could hit you with this car and drive off, and you'd be nothing. No one would know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, if you have AirPods, because I have AirPods, like, I have the audio changed where, like, you can hear, like, outside noise. Yeah, but and it's pretty good. But I'm not going to be doing that around in public. But a lot of people, like, do not have like, walking if, around, I should say. At least. Yeah. So, all right. Last question. How do you recommend movies to your general audience, friends, or family? With how many movies you watch, how do you pick and choose uh, they get to watch? My parents are not really into Dune, but would be into a movie like Abigail. What about you? How do you go about it? Uh, You just know their opinions. Like, I know what movies to recommend to you. I know what movies to recommend to my mom and dad and to my sister. And sometimes I just fucking recommend movies to them because I know they're not going to like it, but I want to see their opinion. I want to know their opinion. And then sometimes they surprise me and they say they liked it. Like poor things was a major thing. My sister, I thought was actually really going to enjoy the movie and thought it was terrible. My parents watched it and thought it was fucking great. That's mm. film opinion. You never know. Um, but yeah. it just depends. You you know, like it's Top Gun Maverick. Anyone who watches it, probably going to like it. Yeah. Long legs. You know, not everyone's going to like it. And I'll know who those people should be. But, I mean, you can get people to watch Long Legs without them really knowing much about it and what yeah. to expect because it's a horror movie. Mm-hmm. People but like, you know if, if people like recommend horror, that to. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But if you're wanting someone to watch it because you thought it was good and you want to have their opinion, yeah. maybe they're not the, you know, yeah. whatever it is. It's a little hard. Like, my wife, I knew was going to watch it because she's all about true crime and shit like that. Yeah. And FBI going after Syria. I was like, she'll probably like it. At least like it. Try, yeah. Uh, and that's like where, you know, like, Tenet. Yeah. I try so much to, like, watch this movie. You know people who don't like that movie I think are dumb? Just watch the movie. I, I legitimately think, like, people who do not like that movie might be dumb. I, like, it's not. I can understand if it's not your cup of tea. But, like, I, yeah. I can understand that. Like uh, our coworker, Anthony and friend, every time he brings up Tenet to me, he's like, I don't get it. I don't fucking get what I watched, but I liked it. I, I Dude, I really want Anthony to come on here. I, I really want Anthony to come on here. I've Anthony, like really debated Anthony, that. It'd be nice to have Anthony on here. Yeah. I would appreciate that. Yeah. I think it's funny how he just talks and he gives his opinions. I don't. It's funny because I'm like, I understand like your frustration with Tenet. Mm-hmm. But you just got to just like, like either A, watch it again and really like try to really pay attention to it or ask, 
what the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah. But, I'll, well, I'll explain it. Yeah. I mean, he always comes up to me. He's like, I need you to explain this and this to me. <laughs> Sometimes it's about House of the Dragons, and I'm like, bro, I don't even know what the fuck's Dude. going on half the time. But yeah, how do you recommend? You just know. You just know what they're going to like or not. Or you tell them, try it. It might not be your cup of tea. It's slow. You set expectations. Like, uh, Dune was a big one. My dad's like, do you think I'll like Dune? I'm like, I think you will if you like understand it. It's a slower movie. It's not straight action and stuff. And he watched it and loved it. And he's excited to watch the second one. Like it just all comes down to context and knowing who your friends and family are. You know what they're going to like. That's, that's about it. Yeah. You know? I don't really think there's else much to it. You just have to be, you just have to know who you're talking to. That's why, like, when certain coworkers ask me if they're gonna like, like, if they should go see something or not, it's hard for me to answer that because I don't know them personally, so I don't know mm-hmm. if they're gonna like this or that. Um, I just set up. This is what the movie is. You might think this. You might not think this. You might think it's the scariest thing. You might think it's not the scariest thing. Do you know how? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, I was just really thinking about this because people do know you and like you watch a lot of movies and people want to hear your opinion because it's valued the way I would try to start approaching this. And this just kind of popped into my head is give them to, um, reviews. He's like me, me personally did not like it, but thinking about the general audience and that's how you could treat anybody. They don't personally know, treat them like a general audience person. Like most people are right. That's why you have to like, yeah. that's why I'd be like, are you going to like it? Yeah. Maybe like yeah. I would say it's probably I like mean, an eight out of 10 for like yeah. a general. That's how I structure a lot of my reviews is I always put, I, I always like to talk about a disclaimer at the end. Like this book me for, I thought was fucking awful. I think it's like one of the worst animated movies ever made. Like genuinely it's awful. But kids will like it. And guess mm-hmm. what? In my comment section, I got that. My kid loved it. Awesome. awesome. Fucking great for you. I'm so happy that your kid liked the movie. I'm not a fucking kid. Then they'll come back. Well, this movie was made for kids. Guess what? A lot of animated movies are, but adults can enjoy them too. Look at The Incredibles. It's about a man having a midlife crisis. This, like, I, I, I mean, hate, I hate, hate, hate when someone says that because animation is for everybody. Doesn't matter. I can go. My favorite film is Toy Story. I can go back and watch Toy Story every single day and be completely I fine. Mean, there's some pretty mature ani- or anime. Anime too, but like that's my thing. Like I just if a movie's shit to me. Family Guy, shit. yeah. South Park. Yeah, I mean, th- there's a lot of animations yeah. that is not just for kids. Yeah, but this, and that's my thing. Like, there's always a disclaimer. You might think it's funny. You might think it's well made. And comedy is very subjective too. Just because me four is technically a comedy. If it made you laugh, and you're probably gonna forgive a lot of its issues. If it doesn't make you laugh, then you're gonna start nitpicking every little thing the story the characters the character arcs previous films and how great those were that's what i, I started like people doing. just need some hug like just need I, a hug. I, th- I think people just need to grow the fuck up i i, I okay. genuinely like i i think after covid I, something after covid like i don't know if people were just bottle up in their fucking house for too long or what but i've just noticed that people have really strict opinions and it's their opinion and that's it people i mean it's a, people move to the yeah. internet essentially is how i put it yeah like i just anytime i get like a shit comment i just i laugh and like uh phil got a shit comment um a couple a couple uh clip outs ago and i commented i'm like bro who gives a fuck <laughs> Because he said uh, the new Starship Troopers game was better than Helldivers 2. His opinion. He's allowed to feel that. Some of the stuff he was pitching to me on this game, I wasn't going to buy it. But when he said it's 16 players instead of four, damn, that sounds like fun. Yes. And people were shitting on that. And I'm like, I get why. If you have more than four friends that want to play at once, then yeah, obviously the game that you're wanting to play has more. It's just people are dumb. People are assholes. But... uh yeah, do you have anything else to say? No, man. All right. I well, think we can wrap it up here. Yeah, let's get out. So, guys, thank you so much again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, rate, wherever you're watching or listening to us at on either YouTube or Spotify or Apple. Again, the next episodes will be mostly Comic-Con coverage. Uh, me and Phil are going to try and do a lot. We're going to go to Deadpool and Wolverine so you get a spoiler review for that. I'll have my non-spoiler review 
Tuesday the week of, I think, I'm trying to remember what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it Monday the week of before it comes out. Shout out to Disney and Marvel too. They're having the press screening at the exact same time as everybody else around the world. Thank you for doing that. I'm so tired. I love when studios do that. Makes my day. I don't care what time I have to go to the theater. That makes my day when the studios do that. No Time to Die did that, the James Bond film. Mm. And it was so glorious. I didn't care I had to go to the theater at 2, 8, 2 p.m. I was totally fine with it. So thank you so much again. And uh, we'll come back uh, fairly soon. So we'll yeah, have you on so. next month. I'm hoping uh, maybe new desks soon so we can have up to three to four people if the other thing works. But uh, cool. yeah, thank you so much again for watching. Have a great rest of your day.